Hi, it's Rob Moore here, and I'm gonna share with you eight ways to go more viral on social media. For more followers, more fans, more reach, more income, more likes, more shares, you know, whatever it is that you wanna achieve on your social media. Uh, yes, this is take two. I did three takes this morning. That's five takes for two bloody videos, but I'll get there in the end. Okay, so I've actually got about 15, so I'll end up doing two parts to this. So listen to future podcasts, watch future videos, you'll find them there. All right then, so first way to get more shares, reach, likes, following in your social media posts uh, by giving your content and sharing your message is to have the seven steps, the five tips, the nine tricks, ideally between five and nine ways to achieve the promise in your title. So the promise in this title is eight ways to go viral on social media. I could add for more reach and income. Um, and so I'll go through eight ways to do that. So it's good to have between five and 10, any more than 10 is probably a bit overwhelming for people. For some, uh, for some reason, an odd number is more believable. So it's good to have five, seven or nine. Thanks for all the uh, supportive comments while we're live. My mouth is fine. My mind is fine. <laughs> Second way to do this then, and you know, I've been testing these for years and my social media reach is, is really going well. I've gone from, what, 25,000 to 120,000 followers on my Facebook in, what, maybe six weeks. So things are going well and I'm just sharing what I've learned along the way. So the second way then is uh, going against the tide of conventional wisdom. You know, when people are hearing all the time, uh, you've got to get up early to be a winner. And then I say something like, oh, this 5 a.m. club bollocks. And you actually don't have to get up early to be a winner. And just because you're telling everyone on social media that you're getting up early doesn't actually mean you're a winner. People go, hallelujah, because they've had enough. You know, there's a lot of this political correctness at the moment. There's a lot of this gender discussion. Uh, and, you know, sometimes in the end, people are going to have, en have had enough. So don't go against the tide for the sake of it, because I think that's, I don't want you to have, it's not, you know, it's not about gimmickry and just doing it for the sake of it. Um, but, you know, when everyone's saying X and you say Y, that's a very powerful thing to do. Um, I uh, made a little post about the royal wedding and people went pretty wild on that just because I, I, I made a question that made it look like I was going against the, the, the you know, the royal flavour and the, and the patriotism. Um, and, you know, hey, look, uh, only do things that you believe in. Otherwise, you're going to get a load of um, energy back in the form of criticism. And maybe you're not even going to, um, you know, you don't even believe in the thing that you're saying. OK, so the third point then is what everyone's had enough of. Uh, so if people have been on and on and on and on and on and on and on, um, if you made a comment about everyone taking photos of their food or just something that everyone's doing and sick of, and you make a comment on that, uh, um, you know, you could make a, a flippant remark or you could make a detailed post about it, then, um, you know, you're going to probably get a lot of reach, a lot of debate, discussion, which is likely to be good for you. The fourth thing then is to try and evoke a single emotion. So I interviewed Nicole Arbor on my podcast, The Disruptive Entrepreneur, and I said to her, um, how do you make your videos go viral? Because she was saying, oh, I'm making videos go viral. Well, that's easy. Anyone can do that. Well, no, it's not that easy. And I said, well, what do you do? What's your model? And she says, well, I start with trying to get a single emotion, whether it's anger or love or something like that. So you could think, what single trigger emotion do I want to get? And then make a post, a video about, about trying to elicit that emotion. And then when, when, you know, when you get someone to feel that emotion, like maybe music does or film does, then they're likely to share it with other people. Okay, the, what are we on now? One, two, three, I think we're on five. Uh, and then that is news jacking, you know, what's trending? Can you comment on what people have got a lot of energy about? So when the Royal Wedding was there, um, I made a post about that and that got hundreds of comments on LinkedIn and Facebook and it wouldn't have had if I, you know, I was talking about a Royal Wedding when there wasn't one. Um, obviously there's a lot of things in the media right now that are getting people excited. Um, or angry. Uh, and um, again, I don't like to use these for gimmicks. So you'll never see me doing politics or race or religion for the sake of it. There are a lot of social commentators or social justice warriors. They're different things, but there are both of those who just seem to comment, comment on anything and everything. And I personally really do not like commenting on anyone's misfortune. Um, I actually like to do the opposite. So actually, if we go back to number two, against the tide, 
Um, I, I don't know if you remember when Jamie Carragher spat out of his car uh, and that was filmed. And of course, everyone was, you know, having a right go at him. And I said, well, wait a minute. Look, you know, the guy's had a great career. The guy's a great commentator. He's hardly made a mistake. You know, he's in the public eye all the time. There's a camera in his face. You know, he was, he was maybe enticed a little bit. I didn't say I thought it was good. I didn't agree with it. I just said, well, hey, look, maybe we could look at it another side. Should he really get um, sacked out of, you know, from everything or should he be given another chance? Um, GDPR, that's another thing that uh, maybe everyone's had enough of. So, you know, if you could make a, a, a comment about how you've had enough about that. And, and by the way, these aren't just like you making comments. You know, you can add value, you can um, add content, you can contribute um, education, emotion, um, tips, you know, that, that, that really give something as opposed to, you know, like I think there are a lot of people that just create energy, create discussion, create debate um, just for the sake of it. Um, and, you know, I'm not sure that that gives you longevity in building your brand. Um, occasionally what you do want to do is do something for pure engagement's sake because it will probably be favourable to you on the algorithms. You know, so I'm doing this live feed now. If I said, uh, just say hi, so tell me where you're from. Say hi and tell me where you're from. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a smiley face if you're loving the video. Give me an angry face if you think I'm waffling. You know, if I did that and I start to get a few comments and replies, feel free to do that by now, by the way, if you're watching, then um, Facebook is likely to reward me by giving me more shares and more reach. Um, so from time to time, I like to make posts. Oh, I'm getting lots of hearts now. Oh, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 50. Oh, thank you. Um, so every now and again, I like to fuel the engine, if you like and create a post I know is likely to get a lot of engagement uh, because then maybe my next post will get seen and my next video will get seen. Have you ever noticed when you go online on social media or you know, on websites and you view something, maybe you're doing a bit of shopping or you know, you've um, gone onto a certain website and then all of a sudden that same theme seems to follow you. Um, I recently bought some porcupine DVDs, sorry, um, porcupine um, tree, uh, vinyl, it's a band, it's a progressive rock band, and I bought some vinyl for Seth Godin as a thank you for coming on my podcast. And it seemed like everywhere I was going was Porcupine Tree or Porcupine Tree ads or whatever. So they're bloody smart with these algorithms and they'll follow you around. So if you can get your um, post seen more by more people, then the next one and the next one and the next one will. I'll cover a bit more of that in my um, part two of this. Um, what's trending, what's in people's mind, what they've already got energy and emotion around. If you comment on that, you will leverage that energy and emotion. Okay, next one then, and I think you should use this sparingly, but I think it's very relevant and val valuable, is, you know, what do you really believe is wrong in the world? You know, there are a lot of people who obviously believe that eating meat is really, really bad, and they go on the sort of, you know, the vegan uh, bandwagon, if you like, and, you know, they, they, I'm not judging by saying this. I'm just saying, you know, they passionately believe about that. They're going to fight for that. And I respect people who have a strong belief for something they think that's right and they go for it. And, you know, even if I don't agree with that and people will respect you if you fight for something and you stand up for something and you stand for something, they will admire you for that. However, if you do that about everything every five minutes and change your mind every five minutes, then they're just going to go, here Rob goes again on the next bandwagon, you know, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, say, Save this for, um, you know, when there's something that you do passionately believe in or believe against. Uh, Ricky Gervais does this a lot. He's really, really against all the cruelty to animals, especially dogs. So he goes on a massive tirade when there's that horrible, um, I don't know where it is. You remember there's that dog. It's just like this festival where they kill and eat dogs. Um, you know, and, and, and he's, he just, he hates that. Um, Kevin Peterson, if you follow him on Instagram, he really is against all the um, slaughtering of the rhinos, you know, for the horns. Um, and these guys, if they just went on every bandwagon, you wouldn't really respect or admire them. But, you know, they believe in this and they're going to try and change the world doing it. That will get your posts, your comments, your brand more viral, more, you know, more reach. Um, the next type of post, which seems to do really well, is just the, the pure motivational post. You know, hashtag whatever it takes. Get up, work, repeat, mother. <laughs> uh, and, um, you know, I must admit, I've got a few hang ups about just blurging out all this take massive action uh, because you know I think well yeah anyway duh we all know that and I get myself in a bit of a like uh, state where I'm like I can't just do motivational posts I've got to give education and context and meaning 
Uh, but sometimes a short, sharp, bang, just fucking do this, uh, you know, it's very valuable and people love it. And look at Instagram, it's absolutely full of them. So I'm trying to get over myself and doing some of these, you know, I'm trying to maybe take some of my sound bites. If you don't risk anything, you risk everything. To know and not to do is not to know, just go. Um, you know, when all is said and done, more is said than done. Um, you know, people will hate about you, the very thing that's great about you, and you get them on some images with some hashtags and some motherfuckers on the end. And they're really effective, especially on the visual social media platform. So don't be scared to do a bit of the old motivational stuff. Now, in, as well as the short form motivation, you know, if you did a really long post of motivation, um, you know, saying maybe how you had some challenges and you fired yourself up, people are going to likely um, pass that on as well. Uh, okay, and then the final one for this video and podcast, and I'll share with you the others I'm going to do in the next one, is um, questions and creating topical debate. So where you usually might make a statement, why don't you try and turn that into a question? Um, because, you, you know, like I did a, a post just this morning about, you know, all this sort of political correctness and how, you know, it's very difficult to say anything without anyone get, getting offended. And if I put what do you think at the bottom of that, you know, I'm likely to get between 30 and 200 comments on LinkedIn. Whereas if I just put my comment, I might get between five and 20 comments saying, yeah, I agree or, or, or yeah, I don't. So even just adding, what do you think or would you agree at the bottom, um, you know, will make a difference to your engagement. Now, I'm not just looking for you to get engagement for the sake of it to go, whoa, I got more engagement. You know, I want your posts and your videos and your content to be assets that get shared that then find people find back to you so that you can have more followings who can then trickle down and buy your books and your products and you know you can charge fees for your program so you know it's, it's hey look if you want to be a social commentator and you're not really bothered about the monetization side of it fine um but you know the more the more followers the more fans the more subscribers you have the the more you have to monetize um you know it, it, we seem to have worked out that a, a um a podcast subscriber is probably worth probably worth about one uk pound so if you have a million subscribers in the way that you can run ads and monetize is likely to be a million pounds, 10 million subscribers, 10 million pounds. Um, so, you know, there's a method behind this. So, you know, can you create topical debate? Can you polarize people by making an extreme view that you believe in or something that's uh, very debatable or emotional? Um, you know, and, and I'll tell you what um, I'll do is I'll, I'll give you some specific examples in another video as well. Um, and podcast, obviously, uh, I'm here talking to you live, uh, you know, so I, I don't specifically have examples. In fact, I'll tell you what, I'll find some examples. Why don't I do that while we're live? But before I find some specific examples, um, I'm very excited to announce that uh, we've just launched a brand new event called the Social Media Summit. Uh, and um, in true style of the way we like to launch things here, um, I want to make it really easy for you to do so. And I want to basically give it to you for the cost of a book. So my very good friend, Paul Omahani, has written a book, um, which I was um, I'm pleased to say I was involved in him writing it. Um, he, he was with me when he wrote it um, called Rethink Social Media. Uh, and a lot of people, he, Paul says, do social media wrong. Um, and, it, you know, he thinks it should be called social media, not social media. Uh, and Paul is all about taking social media and using it to build a brand and run a business and build an empire, you know, as opposed to just taking photos of your food. Nothing wrong with that. But, you know, like so if you're interested in monetizing social media, you know, you want to build your, yourself a brand. You know, look at all these American influencers who have these vast brands. 750,000 to 6 million or more followers. You know, they make tens of millions a year on social media. Look at all these Instagram people who make millions on Instagram. These YouTubers and podcasters who are having, you know, they're, they're, it's a real business, makes six or seven or eight figures uh, because they've worked out how to, to monetize it and still giving lots of value. So my good friend Paul has written a book called Rethink Social Media and it's just come out on Audible literally a few days ago. Um, he wanted to give it to some of his VIP clients first, hence why it's got 25 reviews already. But if you just go to tiny.cc forward slash rethink social, that's tiny.cc forward slash rethink social, um, and grab a copy of that on audio, it's on Audible, um, and just either message me or put in the thread, um, you know, your copy, your receipt of getting the book. Uh, for the first 200 of you, we're going to give you a ticket to the Social Media Summit. This is a brand new one-off event, um, we're only going to have 200. It's in our training facility. 
um, that we have in Peterborough, just outside London. It's on July the 7th and 8th. And we'll be, I'll, be, I'll be doing two keynote speeches. Paul will be doing two or three keynote speeches. I'll be talking about being a content machine and getting your message out there to the masses and monetizing it. We've got a LinkedIn expert coming in and teaching you how to build a big brand and a business on LinkedIn. We cover, uh, we've got a whole slot on Instagram and doing the same on Instagram. Paul's got, you know, taking general social media and turning it into a business rather than just a hobby. Uh, we've got two brand new uh, mystery guests that are doing new keynote speeches that we've not shared before. Um, I'll probably be able to share an agenda a bit later, um, you know, nearer the time. So simply go to Rethink Social Media on Audible or tiny.cc forward slash Rethink Social, grab a book, show me you've got your copy. And if you're in one of the first 200, um, then you will give you a free place basically just for getting the audio book. Now, as I speak, there will be dozens of people going to do it. But once this podcast and video settles, there will be hundreds of people going and doing it. So while you're listening to or watching right now, go and do it. Um, if we fill out, we have no more plans. If we get like two or 3,000 people wanting it, which we've had in previous launches, we'll consider a second date, but we have no second date planned as of yet. Um, a lot of people also start to worry when they see a lot of posts about people wanting to book on the event, but you're only actually booked onto the event when you've confirmed with one of my team, not when you've just gone and purchased the, the audio book. So yes, show me a receipt on a thread, um, but then one of my team will message you and confirm and you know make the booking official. Only then uh, are you confirmed. Uh, you don't have to pay anything for this event. I'm going to subsidize it all myself. I, you know, I own the training facility, so you know I can pass that cost on to you. All right then, so what I'm gonna do in this next video, because I'm gonna do a bit of a series over the next couple of days, um, is I'm gonna cover what you've 360, 60, 60'd on, um, your mistakes and regrets, rants, interviews, discussions, debates, um, analysing influencers' content and sharing that, and what you wish you'd known or you previously been told. Um, I'm going to tip there, there an, another one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different types of social media posts, blog posts, article posts, videos, podcasts that get shared and, and will, will go viral. Okay, so as I promised, uh, I'm going to um, go through some examples. Let's see if I can find a few here. I'll go on my LinkedIn because um, I, I normally post them there. Let's see if I can do some examples of the posts that I've set. So that Jamie Carragher one where I basically said, look, give him a break. Should we give him a second chance? By the way, if you're talking about controversial things and you're not 100% sure where you stand, say, should we give him a second chance rather than let's give him a second chance? That way it's a question and you're not making a statement that you're, you don't 100% necessarily know if you, you believe in. Uh, but that got 250,000 views in a day um, and hundreds of comments. And people, uh, you know you've done a good um, post when people are arguing in the subthreads and a lot of people worry about that and they delete them. No, 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 you want people to have debates and arguments in the, th in the subthreads of your posts. Okay, so I did a post called, they say, speak your truth and it will set you free, but really, and then I've put here, it seems that you can't say anything at all at the moment without getting, a, without offending anyone. So I posted that this morning, that's had 31 comments. Um, so that, uh, here's another one. Um, you know that they say ideas are worthless, it's only action that matters. I disagree. Mindless action is like a dog humping a leg. Often it's a great or random idea that gets you out of a rut and fuels execution. That's had 65 likes and 35 comments today. Um, I posted actually a share that I was going through a bit of a lack of motivation. Uh, that's had 92 comments and 142 likes. So sharing struggles that you're going through is another great way of getting good reach um, and virality on social media. So anyway, so look out for the part two where I'm going to be sharing another seven or eight ways to go viral on social media so that you can build your business, your brand, your reach, your customers, your followers and your fans. And remember, go to uh, tiny.cc forward slash Rethink Social. If you're one of the first 200 to get Paul O'Mahani's audio book, Rethink Social Media, I'm going to pay for you for a ticket to our brand new social media summit, two days um, of deep dive, all social me media for business content, LinkedIn, Instagram. Oh, we're doing Facebook Messenger um, automation. Uh, that's another topic that's going to be discussed. I'm going to be doing how to get your content, your message and your products out to the masses. Um, it's July the 7th and 8th. Um, so it's coming very soon. Uh, so don't miss your chance to go and get that. So thanks for tuning in. And remember, if you don't risk anything, you risk everything.